Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires. Today we're diving face first into another week as Sito playing as the Blue Bohemians prepares to take on MBL playing as the Red Burmese. Now while the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings and try to go up to feudal as fast as possible, let's take a look at the respective Civ matchup we'll be watching today. Now Sito seems to have been favoring the Bohemians lately, a Civ that very much pushes its players towards gunpowder units. Chemistry upgrade available in Castle Age, meaning Cannoneers are available in Castle Age, and all gunpowder units available to them <clears throat> can be upgraded to move 15% faster. Now, the Bohemians also have access to two incredibly powerful gunpowder units at their disposal. The first is their first unique unit, the Hussite Wagon, a giant, powerful siege unit, sometimes referred to as the Mobile Wall, because it can actually protect the units behind it from enemy projectiles. Now, the second is the Haufnitsa, or the Howitzer, which is basically an upgraded version of the Bombard Cannon with more HP, better armor, higher damage, and a wider blast radius. Now, lately, this uh, unit has been uh, nerfed by making it cost a significant amount of resources more and reducing its blast radius by, I believe, 0.1 tiles to uh, 0.7 compared to the 0.5 of the Bombard Cannon. Now, on the field of battle, these gunpowder units are expensive, so if you want to provide backup for them, the Bohemians have a few interesting bonuses. First, their Spearman line units uh, deal 25% extra bonus damage. So I'm talking about Spearman, Pikemen, and Halberdiers. And you can actually completely evolve your entire monk line to be a trash unit. Yes, you heard that right. Monks as a trash unit by upgrading all the cost of monks and monk upgrades to replace it from gold to food now as every player knows gunpowder units are pretty damn expensive so to pay for them universities and blacksmiths do cost less wood mining camp upgrades are free markets work 80 percent faster and villagers are harder to kill later on in the game because they do benefit from fervor and sanctity which are monk upgrades that give the villagers more hp and moves uh makes them move a little bit faster now posing our blue bohemian we've got mbl the red burmese a sieve that very much focuses on its mounted units their battle elephants automatically come with extra armor and can be upgraded to get even more armor and their cavalry can be upgraded to get a massive plus five attack boost against archer units which could actually come in handy when playing against the civilization like the bohemians now, the unique unit of the Burmese is the Arambai. This is a ranged cavalry unit that throws darts at its opponents with absolute, absolute horrible accuracy. I think the base Arambai is 20%, Elite is 30 But the trick with Arambai, even the darts that miss, deal 100% damage to whatever unit they land on compared to the 50% damage that other archer units do when they land on the wrong target. Now, to support your mounted units, especially their elephants, which are incredibly expensive and slow on the field of battle, the Burmese actually have two very, very strong options. First, their infantry get a progressive attack boost starting in feudal all the way up to imperial, plus one every single age. So your infantry as the Burmese, whatever comes out of this barracks in imperial age, will come out with a massive plus three attack added to whatever upgrades you decide to research for them. Now, if you want to go the Spellcaster route, I'm talking, of course, Monks. Monastery techs are cheaper. And one of the very cool features about the Burmese, let me actually show you, instead of just describing it, they can see exactly where all the relics are out on the map. So very, very, very good bonus, especially if you're playing a Civ that very much needs relics or has relic-related uh, bonuses like the Lithuanians or the Aztecs, etc., now, in order to build the infrastructure needed to pump out huge amounts of units, all lumber camp technologies are free for the Burmese. So overall, potentially a very explosive mid to late game uh, rivalry here between these two civilizations. And by the way, more and more, I'm noticing that uh, players are choosing Bohemians and Burmese. I don't know if they're uh, I should let me put let me put that another way. I'm noticing a lot more games with Burmese and Bohemians. I mean, uh, several days ago, I casted a game of Sito where he already played the Bohemians. We'll see if he's leaning uh, towards that more and more. I absolutely don't mind if players have certain civilizations they prefer over others. Absolutely makes no difference to me. 
the better they are at the Civ, the more exciting the game is, the more exciting the cast, and the more exciting it is for all of us. But more and more Bohemian, more and more Burmese, we'll see what that means for us. I mean, I <laughs> if you if you haven't seen a Rambi being used on the field of battle, I hope we get to see them this game because they are just absolutely fantastic when they can hit a target. That's the big asterisk. They're fantastic when they can actually hit a target. For now, Sito busy, busy walling himself off into a, a small enclave here, circling MBL's base with these two very, very damaged militias and a scout cavalry. Let's see the opponent's uh, bases where they've spawned. Red, completely open to the north, completely open to the east. Where's his primary gold? Okay, nice and secure in the back as is his primary stone. So decent resource location here for red, but the base very hard to uh, wall off. You can see he's starting to create some kind of wall off, but will take a lot of wood and a lot of villager downtime in order to do that. Sito, on the other hand, what can I say about his base since he's already walled himself in stone already, uh, rather in the very, very forward position, primary gold a little bit off to the side. So Whatever I was going to say about how his north and east are completely open are irrelevant. He has walled it off. They are both in feudal. And now our first archery range is out just in time to be welcomed by three militias of Burmese, of, uh, of Burmese, three Burmese militias of MBL. Sorry, guys. Some, uh, there's a lot of letter Bs here, if you haven't noticed. Burmese, MBL, uh, Bohemians. Sito, of course not, but MBL circling. And now we know why he's circling. Sent five villagers forward. They are going to build a tower. So we're going to see a good old-fashioned tower rush attempt here by MBL, by the Burmese. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. No particular uh, tower-related bonuses or um, static defense slash offense bonuses for the Burmese. I would understand more if this was Korean or perhaps even Byzantine with their tankier structures, but for now, MBL doesn't give a, a damn what I think. First tower is up, and now he's teefing the stone of his opponent. Love to see it. I mean, I'm assuming he's going to teef He's been building a mining camp, and now the men-at-arms are pivoting. Let's see what MBL has seen of his opponent's base. Oh, yeah, he's seen basically the entirety of Sito's base. What has Sito seen? Basically, the entirety of MBL's base. We've got a bit of a fracas here happening. Man, militia's taking on Spearman. One Spearman does die at the cost of two militia. So, a uh, trades in favor here of MBL so far. Two kills to one, plus resources. I see a sneaky, sneaky archer outline here behind this barracks. Let's see. Uh, Sito shows me that he's built the second requisite structure. Where is it? It is here, the blacksmith getting fletching so take a look at these archers plus one plus one we'll see how useful that is against the tower i mean mbl only has 50 stone left so not a surprise i i wonder if we're going to see a tower rush or if this is just uh you never know with these players right i mean you, you think yeah uh, especially as a caster okay there's a defensive tower going up at home as well he does not want to get uh towered himself i guess or attack these archers are not going to be able to do much with this one tower, although they might be able to annoy these villagers if they hang out here at the base of this uh, circle of death here. But yeah, we'll see. One of the fun things about casting players this good is sometimes you think you know what they're going to do, and then they turn around to do something else. You know, a tower rush accompanied by a significant military presence here. Three uh, men-at-arms, two uh, spearmen, a scout, and two skirmishers with a third reinforcing mbl what does he have at home here does he have any military at home no he's got one skirmisher here but five archers trying to sneak out the west starting to sneak out the side of the base is this closed off yes this is closed off and somehow we're going to see i hope the scout cavalry should see them right oh my god no right on the edge of the vision of this scout cavalry mbl does not know what's about to hit him. Five archers making their way south through the darkness, through the gray zone. They are marching at night. And we'll see what they manage to do. MBL, though, doesn't know for now. Continuing to teeth the stone. He's got plenty of stone here. 275, and now he's moving north with another villager. We'll see what she's for. She's built a few houses for them. 
We'll see if these are just vacation cottages or if they're actually meant to support any kind of military. Skirmishers managing to get an archer here. Not a great start for our blue bohemian, to be honest. Three kills to one. Villager count, though, is identical. And in come the archers. Let's see how annoying these guys can be. I see something under attack here. Okay, another tower. So, MBL very much interested in pushing in with towers. Has revealed these uh, archers, though. They went in. They looked around. They didn't like what they saw, I guess. And now they're backed off. Okay. If Red was uh, on his, uh, you know, on the ball, let's say, I think he should have seen these archers, right? Which now basically nullifies the entire surprise of having those archers. Take a look at this. Just the tip. How much more can you get? How much? Uh, oh, man. What a good, good tower placement here. Going to be incredibly annoying. More and more buildings from blue are under attack. Red, okay, but we'll lose these two skirmishers. I'm not sure why he's coming forward with the archer. Should lose at least one. They retreat to the safety of the town center. Not yet garrisoned. Okay, immediately garrisoned. Blue's uh, scout has to go away. And now these five archers are, are doing a, a random tour of the map for some reason. When we say tour of duty, that's not what we mean, Sito. We don't mean you go and you have a little pleasure vacation with your units around the map. Okay, another tower being built to the north. One villager only, so we'll take a while for that tower to get uh, up and running. But my god, this is so annoying. I, you, my, Everyone watching this must have, who, who's played this game, who plays this game, must have had this happen to them once, uh, you know, once or twice, where it's just, you've got multiple buildings under attack. It's so annoying little dings little pings little sounds little arrows firing it's just an oratory nightmare oh beautiful tower placement here by sito to block this tower cancels it builds it nice and safe outside the zone will be able to get a few villagers not uh not a great tower placement here by mbl maybe should have put it here to capture more of these villagers but in any event as I was saying, it's so annoying to play when you've got multiple buildings and multiple structures of your own under attack. Uh, you don't know. It just, it's annoying. You're being pulled in multiple directions. But my lord, 11 crossbows now as Sito has reached Castle. And I don't know if this is what MBL was trying to avoid. You do not want your Bohemian opponent to reach Castle. Although Sito supply blocked, he is housed. Is he building actual houses? Yes, he is. We'll see what he does with it for now. Crossbow's moving in. Oh, yeah, their range is going to make them nice and aggressive here. Nice and effective, although they do take a bunch of tower fire. Not sure he really needed to take 75, 20% HP damage here. And now knights are out. And now our red, bow, uh, red Burmese went from being aggressive. I think he's going to have to pivot and be defensive here. I wonder if this entire force... No, this entire force can't take on a knight. I mean, maybe if you disperse the uh, skirmishers enough. But that knight is going to take out that tower. These crossbows have to be careful. Oh, only took one volley. Interesting. I guess he ungarrisoned the villagers, and now Red is running away. He knows the uh, his presence here at the Bohemian base is about to be over. Nothing he can do to stop this ram. He's got to go home. He's got to regroup. He's got to build infrastructure. Uh, but more and more importantly, he's got to survive 45 more seconds until he hits castle. His military supply, not terrible. 12 skirmishers, 3 spearmen. But get that army home. Half of it is here. Babysitting a villager that is not really doing much. Sito discovers it. Crossbow's not as scared of basic bitch skirmishers as their earlier counterpart, the Archer. And now he's streaming uh, Spearmen forward? Not too sure why MBL is sacrificing these Spearmen. They are not fantastic against Knights, even with a small attack bonus of 15. Get those guys to Pikemen. Oh, no, 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 no. At least get the one Knight. Does not even manage to get one swipe off. Another house <laughs> being built uh mbl the builder here is just uh plopping down houses all over the map sito using his castle age advantage uh hitting it first builds the second town center 
Not a terrible location. In the back, secure against any kind of run buys here. Oh, God. You know, things are going bad for MBL. Now they went from bad to worse. Now the uh, dangerous animals, aggressive animals on Arabia are attacking him. Oh, God. Now, okay, Monastery, not a bad counter to the knights. How many knights does uh, Sito have? Four knights. And now I'm starting to get a little worried for MBL. I, I, I don't know what the goal here was with one tower one tower and one tower not exactly a tower push not exactly a tower rush supported by huge amounts of infantry but look at this look at this blue arrow ahead of death about to co conglomerate into one huge army of 18 army supply although take a look at their hp down 300 hp so not exactly the uh formidable force that Sito wants to portray this to be second town center going up for our Burmese as well. Numbers wise, this is quite scary because especially because Red still doesn't have. Oh no, he does have all his army home. No, never mind. He's, he's sending skirmishers out for some reason. These are elite now, so they should be able to scare away the crossbows. But when your opponent comes at you with uh, 16 army supply at half HP, you can potentially take that fight. Okay, these uh, two walls <laughs> are going to see a little bit, not too much. A third town center going up for our Burmese player. Okay, so he didn't succeed with his tower push. I don't even know whether to call it a tower push. It didn't really seem like he was very committed. He was committed to teefing this uh, stone pretty well. But three towers, two on one side, one on the other. Can you even call that a tower push? A tower rush. Now I think our red Burmese is in a little bit of trouble. Now that there's siege moving forward, these skirmishers are going to be nullified. Oh yeah, good luck elite skirmishers versus this uh, battering ram with its 180 pierce armor. <laughs> our Burmese player desperately, desperately needs some kind of melee unit out. He's got one scout that is now at half health because it is engaged with the scout of his opponent. Archery range going down. Another monastery being built. Let's see what he can do here. What he's decided to do is go for Sanctity. I'm not sure that's really the right move here. Do you really need more HP on your monks right now? In any event, three town centers up for our red Burmese. He is behind on villagers. But... With three town centers, he might just be able to catch up. Okay, finally. Okay, this is not a bad upgrade to get. Redemption allows, uh, where are his monks? These guys, to convert siege, to convert uh, structures. But this is a lot here from our blue bohemian moving forward. And now a castle. Uh, not, a, not an aggressively placed castle. It'll get the market within its uh, sphere of influence. Okay, Mangonel convert attempted dodging fantastic here by mbl converts the mangonel but will and a knight by the way both of those units though die the monks have to retreat oh sacrifice these guys who cares just get as many crossbows as you can and now military supply has been uh evened out red does see uh sito building this castle the question is how will he respond he responds by continuing to build housing here on the northeast side of the map Okay, when I said uh, forget the skirmishers and go after the crossbows, I didn't mean sacrifice all of them. And in comes a ram. Monk not yet at full faith. Archery range being completed here. But I, I don't think that uh, battering ram is going to engage. But what a play here by MBL. Distracting the entirety of uh, Sito's army here to the north. Absolutely fantastic, but unfortunately for him, where is his army? It is non-existent. It is three monks, and where are those monks? They're sneaking to this side. Not sure why they're sneaking around to the west side of the map. There's no... Uh, does he? You've got a town center here to defend against the knights. I don't think you need your monks that way. Uh, that away. Oh, he's going to see the monks here. He's going to know he made a mistake. He's building elite skirmishers. No more monks for him. He can build four more monks. He's got the gold for it. This is his vision. This is so scary in Age of Empire when you, you don't know where your opponent's going to attack from. And Sito's an Imperial. Let's see how MBL... 
<laughs> Let's see how MBL reacts was exactly what I was going to say. He reacts by GGing, knowing that he's just way too far behind. Bohemians, not a civilization you want to play against when you're behind an entire age. Although, take a look at uh, MBL's resources, a little bit of gold. This, I guess this is why he's not spending his gold on monks, because he's trying his darndest to get up to Imperial Love, the uh, the uh, two mining camps, by the way. I think a lot of play players would do well to do something like this so that these villagers don't have to walk all the way around. But uh, yeah, I think he realizes he's just way too far behind. And now in Imperial, you know what that means. That means a big old juicy trebuchet is probably going to pop out of here. And if not a trebuchet, then very much a bombard cannon. And good luck with your two elite skirmishers to take on a bombard cannon uh, and your monks when you've got crossbows and knights. 17 army supply to five. Uh, a bracer. So these guys are going to have even more range, although obviously not as much as the monks. Okay, uh, not a bad game here. Uh, MBL trying, but again, I don't know why he didn't fully commit, uh, unless I'm mistaken, unless that does count as a full commit. Two towers here, one tower here. No other forward infrastructure, instead building houses off to the side of the map. One idle villager, basically the entire game, uh, after they, he got this, she got dislodged from this uh, stone pile. Protecting the relics is MBL. Fantastic play. He's already gathered one, and he just burst out of the the, the soft container. Is this uh, a new meta here for uh, Cito? I wonder. To we've seen Mister Yo do it, especially during some live streams uh, about a month or so ago, month or two. I think it was in January. We saw uh, Mr. Yo just playing incredibly defensive, building these kinds of small enclaves. Take a look at the map, the mini map at the uh, bottom center of your screen. This looks like something out of a campaign, right? Where you're supposed to journey with uh, King Richard all the way from this part of the map to this town center, and then the villagers uh, help you out and you uh, whatever, blah, blah, blah. That's what this looks like. It's a small enclave. He protected himself from this... Uh, semi-serious tower rush. I'm not going to call it a serious tower rush, just because, again, the worst that it ever did was take off 100 HP from this town center. But then having lost that, I, uh, yeah, I think MBL maybe positioned his army a little off uh, on the wrong side of the base here. Maybe it would have been better to keep it south, close to the stone. And then if you lose your tower to the north, fine. But with his army, he kept pivoting east, east, all the while losing one unit here, one unit there, gave Sito the ability on the back of 68 villagers to rush up to Imperial at the 33-minute mark of the game. And now that he's Imperial, now that he's playing Bohemians, those big juicy gunpowder units, and especially, I, I, I can almost guarantee that had this game continued even three more seconds, you would see at the bottom left of your screen a trebuchet being built. He's got the wood, he's got the gold, and for sure that's exactly what would have happened, and a ram making its way here. And like I said, why did he place his monks to the west? You've got a town center. You've got a tower. You've got nothing on the east, on the right side of your map. So maybe better would have been, uh, would have been better served having his mon uh, monks over here. That being said, Sito, congrats. Uh, managing to bust out of the contain. Let's take a look at the statistics. APM, yeah, not, not, a, not a very action-packed game, as you can tell by the kill count. Sito, though, two and a half times more kills, or rather maybe just two more, two times more kills, eight times the villager kills, though. Let's take a look uh, and see economically how uh, different they were. Not that different, about 2,000 resources, gold from relics playing literally no role at the moment. Surprisingly, even though he had his stone thief uh, from right under his nose, his stone count is higher, his gold count double. But trash resources go to MBL. And unfortunately for him, his monks are completely off campus here on the wrong part of his base. And the only other thing he's building... How many archery ranges, by the way? I think just the one. Just one archery range. He's got two elite skirmishers. What are the upgrades on them? Okay, plus two, plus one, not terrible. But way too few units. Monks out of position not an Imperial, so once these big heavy units come out, especially Bombard Cannons, 
I mean, Sito nowhere close to the uh, upgrade cost for Hufnitsa. Remember, they raised that to 1,100 food and 800 gold. Uh, I'm going to repeat that in case you didn't hear how crazy that is. 1,100 food and 800 gold. That's basically going up to Imperial. Even more expensive now with the new nerf. Uh, so I, I'm assuming he would have probably stayed on Bombards for a while, given his resource count. In any event... A, a fun attempt here by MBL. I always love when players steal other players' resources right from underneath their nose and uh, use that to create infrastructure to attack that player, which is exactly what he did. But at the end of the day, Monk's in the wrong position. Infrastructure here for MBL non-existent. He's got a, a archery range, a barracks that's about to fall, and two monasteries. I think he was... I mean, again, he he had 500 gold, probably was saving it to go up to Imperial, could have pumped out more monks. Maybe that would have been the saving grace. Unfortunately for him, did not have enough time to find out. Sito rushing, rush, rushing up to Imperial, gets there and starts producing these big, heavy gunpowder units that the Bohemians are very much known for and takes the big W, but GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.